everyone, my name is Sarah Hamid. I'm an author and editor of the Team Pop magazine. I have a passion for technology and its reaches, and I have a trying hand at table tennis every now and then. Today, I'm on behalf of the Team Pop magazine, the Team Pop magazine, which is the first online magazine for high schoolers that gives young aspiring journalists the opportunity to share their voice, build a writing portfolio, and receive peer feedback and mentorship in the editorial industry. If you'd like to write for them, check their website, theteampop.com. And today, um, I have this interview is in coordination with the Teen Pop subsidiary, Grow the Teen Pop campaign. The Grow the Teen Pop campaign is a campaign whereby we promote NGOs and help support them in their cause. And today I'm in conversation with an NGO founder, Hushi Popli. Hushi Popli is the founder and head content head of content writing at the project at Project Pragati. She strongly believes in power of social equality and um, prospects of volunteerism. Through Project Pragati, she aims to empower like-minded teenagers across the globe, enab enabling them to create tangible change in the society. Project Pragati is a youth-led organization that recognizes, supports, and empowers small-scale businesses and other marginalized communities, such as farmers, migrant workers, and low-wage earners that have been impacted by the pandemic. So um, all that aside, thank you for joining us, Hushi. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm good. How are you? Fine. Thank you as well. Um, so, talking about your NGO, how long have you has this been in the works? Like, how long have you had this idea for, and why specifically launch in June, twenty twenty? Right. So, what gave birth to Project Pravati was the hostilities and the sufferings that the pandemic caused. Um, we're all very aware of the fact that. India started getting impacted by the pandemic only in late March, which is when the cases started increasing. Yeah. And it became um, quite evident very quickly which parts of the population and which sectors of the economy were getting impacted the most. Um, so small scale businesses, migrant workers, um, low wage earners and farmers were the most intensely hit. And it took me June to realize that the pandemic is here to and that it's not leaving us anytime soon. And even if it does leave us anytime soon, the effects of it are likely quite long lasting. And that when I decided that there is a gap and that needs to be filled, and that's how I started. I agree with you there. Um, so is there a linear or progressive style of starting an NGO or foundation? Um, so this is a very subjective question. It depends from every organization to the other. For us, it was quite progressive, simply because of the fact that we operate entirely remotely and that we don't do any kind of on-site work, especially because we are in the middle of a global pandemic right now. Okay. But um, yeah, so ours was completely progressive. We started off very, very small team of two people. And now we've um, sort of, we transformed and we it sort of progressed in geometric progression. And we're now a team of about 22 people from about five countries. So for us, it was completely progressive, but for some it's not. And it depends from organization to organization. So um, what's the process of developing or starting an NGO? Like what are the steps you take into making one or starting one? Right, so again, the term NGO is so wide that it depends from the kind of person you are, like how you like your organization, how you work as a person and the cause that you're advocating. But every NGO in general has three things in my opinion. So the first thing that ev it's fundamental for every NGO is an idea or a calling. Um, it's not that you think that you wanna start an NGO and then you think of what cause you wanna cater to, it's the opposite. You find you spot a problem in society and you see you recognize the fact that you can do something to solve that problem and that's when you think of starting an NGO. So first is your idea or your calling which has to be very you have to be passionate about it needs to be something that you care about genuinely. Second thing is building a team of well-suited people, people that you think you can work with comfortably and people that you think can further your mission. And the third thing is to be able to network properly. So um, be make sure that you have a team and you are a person who can reach out to other organizations, other people to endorse or to uh, sort of become an ambassador for your project, to collaborate with other organizations, to just to focus on the cause that you're um, working for. Okay, so putting your life into perspective, right? Um, when you sense fear of discouragement, um, how do you generate confidence from that? 
Um, so it's a very cliche in saying, but all I do is I believe in the, believe in myself, and I it's I don't want to sound very um, cocky or I don't want to sound arrogant, but that's that's how it is. It's um, I recognize the fact that I've come this far and recognize my progress and recognize my privilege, and then um, I think of the fact that um, I am capable of surpassing this. So is everyone. And um, that's how I personally generate confidence, looking at my past and seeing the fact that I've come this far. Um, and I think it should work for everyone because I think everyone has surpassed some sort of difficulties in their life. And the next one's going to be um, as tiny as the previous ones. 100% agree with that. Um, so next question is, um, obviously, when running an NGO or doing anything in life, there are obviously obstacles that come in the way. So how do you combat um, daily obstacles in your NGO to keep it afloat? Right. Um, yeah, there's problems almost every single day, tiny logistical errors to big um, blunders. But I think one problem that almost every NGO would face is a lack of being able to network and further your cause. Um, we live in a society that unfortunately is not very geared towards volunteerism and community action, especially because of the fact that we're so modernized and everything's so fast paced. Um, so it's very, very hard to sort of get your mission out and to generate action and support. And another thing is a lack of being able to um, collaborate and sort of communicate with other NGOs. There's a very misinformed notion that NGOs are competitors. And a lot of people have this um, idea that you and your other NGOs actually Competing as like competing against each other, and as if it's a race, but it's actually the opposite. You're collaborating to work towards one cause, that common cause. Yeah. So it's very hard to sort of establish that connect with other organizations and to sort of find people to believe in you and to help you further that mission. So I think that's one of the biggest problems that I think every single NGO faces. Yeah. Um. Final question. So there are a lot of people watching this, right? And Obviously, they don't. You've done. You've done a lot at your age, um, starting an NGO and everything. Um, a lot of people don't think they can do that. So, what would you like to tell them, in in regards to that? Uh, I think, with respect to starting an NGO, um, I think I I, I don't want to sound exceptionally qualified for this because I'm not. But from personal experience, um, I think that it's very, very important to be aware of everything around you, to be able to have that quality of observation to spot a problem and a gap in the society that you live in. Because no matter where you are, who you are, wherever you're living in the world, there has to be some sort of problem. We're very, very far away from a perfect world right now. Yeah. So um, if you are, if you spot that problem, it's very easy to come up with a solution to solve that problem. So my message to everyone watching this would be um, observe things, people, and observe everything around you. See if there's a gap in society. There has to be. So open your eyes and see if there's something that you can do to solve that problem. And uh, from there on, it's just the journey simpler from that. I think half the battle is just spotting that problem and recognizing yeah. that you can do something to solve it. And after that, it's pretty simple. Exactly. So um, I guess that wraps it up for the interview. Thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure talking to you, uh, Krishi. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Pushy or Project Pragati, um, stay tuned to the Team Pop magazine.